materials that you need to create the crop sweater are two skeins of the Red Heart with Love. I'm using color Berry Red. It's a very pretty red color. Perfect for um, winter, Christmas, and you're going to need two skeins of those. And then you're also going to need a size G, 4.5 millimeter, and a size I, 5.5 millimeter. Now I'm using these two because I crochet kind of tight. So if you crochet loosely, then I suggest that you use smaller size hooks. Um, it depends on you because I'm going to show you how to measure your work so it can fit you. So just keep that in mind. Also going to need some scissors and a tapestry needle to work in your ends. And that is everything that you will need. So we are going to start with the, the front panel here. I have a front panel here. We're going to create just basically two panels that look just like this one here. And I just want to show you what I did. I started here at the ribbed bottom of the sweater. And then I worked my way up. And it's really easy. This is just half double crochet. And these are single crochets in the back loops only back here. And then half double crochets in the back loops only as well. So it's a very simple... Um, you just need to know two different stitches and that's it. And this is, this is the front of my work. And I know that because my my straggler is down here and this is the back of the work okay and as you can see here this is shaping the shoulders and I'm gonna show you how to start this and then also well how to make <laughs> this panel and also how to make the arms and you're gonna need two as well of course so this is the arm here and it's worked the same way. The only difference is that with this one, we're going to be doing inc increased rows to white widen the arm part as we go up. So this is the bottom of our work. And then we work our way up to here. And I'm just going to show you how much it measures. Um, I'm making the extra small, small size. You can say this is for my daughter and she wears an extra small so this is about 18 inches long and then here at the bottom it's oops if i can get it right it's about seven inches wide and then the top is about 11 and a half wide and then for the for the um the panels, the front and back parts, they measure. Let me just turn it here to the side so you can see. From shoulder to the bottom, it measures about a little bit over 14, so like 14 and a quarter. And then from the neck part down, it's about 13 and a half inches. And then when we turn it like this, here at the bottom, it measures about 13 and a half and then towards the top is about almost 15 inches and as we get more up it goes the, the the sweater stretches out and it's about 16 so I didn't do any increases on this part of the sweater only on the arm parts and the way that I took the measurements for my daughter is actually there's a website you can go to online I'll put the description down below and it'll show you the different um, measurements for the different sizes up to I think 3x but what I did is I measured her and let me just show you I wrote them down so I don't forget what her measurements are so for her chest meaning that you, you will wrap the the measuring tape around yourself around the bosom part of your of your chest and she measured 31 and a half and then I measured from shoulder to shoulder from here to here and it measured her her measurements were 14 inches and then from underneath her arm to the waist part she measured 10 inches from neck to waist 
from, from here to the bottom of the sweater because it's going to go up to her waist. She measured um, 13 inches. So that's just something to keep in mind. Those, those are the different measurements that I made so I can come up with the size that I did. And of course I made it a little bigger so it won't be tight on her. So it could have a little bit of pull and stretch when she puts it on as well as the arm part. So the um, the final stitch count that I'm going to give you is for my daughter's size. Now if you want to do it a bigger size then you would refer to the chart that I will put down in the description below so you can um, know what's, what size to make for yourself or you could just measure, measure yourself and know when to stop um, your stitch count. Okay? So that is the best that I can do because remember everybody's um, different. We're not all built the same. And I have a 26 year old daughter who is also an extra small because she's teeny tiny and but they my daughters are built differently my 12 year old is i don't know how to explain it my 26 year old is on the slim side right but my 12 year old is not it's just that there's a different in, in age so just so you know this will fit both my kids both my daughters my 26 year old and my 12 year old so that's just something to keep in mind we're not all built the same so measure yourself and yeah so i'm just going to show you how to work up, up a sweater to make for yourself so to begin i'm going to show you how to crochet the arm part first and we're going to start with the ribbon here at the end which is the wrist part and we're going to be using the g hook to create the ribbon part of the arm and i put this down because i don't want you to see the shadow from the lights that are shining down on me so i hope you don't mind so we're going to start with our yarn we have red heart with love this is a four medium um worsted weight yarn and it's really nice and soft so it's perfect perfect for a sweater and this is berry red in case you were wondering so we're going to start with a slip knot and we're going to chain up seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then we're going to turn our work and we're going to work in those back bumps. We're going to skip the first bump and move over, move on to the second bump and complete a single crochet and then just single crochet all the way across for a total of six. Um, single crochets if you want your ribbon rib ribbon part at the bottom of the sweater to be a little wider than this you can do up to um, eight or ten single crochets across if you want so if you're gonna do eight just chain up nine and do the same exact thing single crochet in the second one and as, you, as long as you follow the same technique here, it, it's, it's fine. You can do the ribbon as big as you want or as small as you want. I did it small because I, I like the small size for this sweater. So then, of course, we're going to chain up one. We're going to turn our work. And then from here on, we're going to work in the back loops only of our work. So we're going to go right into the back loop and create a single crochet. So, excuse me, a single crochet, okay. So we'll do a single crochet all across and we'll continue to do this until we have a total of 32 rows. And then in the, I should have mentioned that in the last space, you always go into both loops just to give it a cleaner look at the end. So you chain one, you turn, you single crochet in the back loops of the first five, just like so. And in the last one, you work in both for a total of six single crochets. 
So continue to do this until you have a total of 32 rows of single crochets in the back loop. And I'll meet you back when we have that. Alright, so I have my 32 rows of the single crochet in the back loops only. So this is going to be the wrist part. If you fold it over, this will fit my child's wrist. <laughs> Let me just show you here that it will actually fit mine as well. But if you're going to do it for yourself, I'm a 2X. It will be much bigger than this. And then the next step, we're going to work up the arm so once we finish with the 30 second row we're going to turn it sideways this way to work up this way so we're going to chain up one and we're going to do a half double crochet into every space which is 32 half double crochets so you got to remember that this is one and this is two this is three this is four as you can see in the rib part here you will put a stitch in there so just gonna show you real quick. My first one will go here. So that's one. My next one will go right there. That's two. The next one will go right in here. And that's three. Make sure you get it in like that. And just continue to do that to do that until you have 32 half double crochets across and I always um, count my stitches before I move on just to make sure that I have the correct amount of stitches because if we don't then we end up with the row count and the pattern will be out of whack my last two so the one goes in here and the next one will go into the last space which is right there. I'm pull my work and I'm just gonna count. This is my first stitch right here. As you can see it's kind of tight. So that's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty, and thirty-two. So now what we want to do is we're gonna switch over after doing our half double crochets into every space. We're going to switch from the G hook to the I hook. So I'm going to put that away and I'm going to start my rows of half double crochets in the back loops only. And for the next four rows, that's what we're going to do. Just a half double crochet into every space. So we chain up one, we turn our work and we half double crochet into the back space of the work all the way across for four rows just like so so continue to do this for four rows and I'll meet you back when I am finished Alright, so I'm here on my fifth row and I'm almost at the end and I just wanted to show you guys that the last stitch could be hidden because the fact that it's a half double crochet so I'm just going to show you that this is not my last stitch of the row okay so I'm going to go through this and make a half double crochet and then this is my last space so I want to go into both spaces to complete my last half of a crochet. And always count your work to make sure that you have the correct amount of stitches. You can see here the first half of a crochet is hidden right, right there. So that will be your first half of a crochet. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. So for round six, this is gonna be an increase row. And what you wanna do is chain up one, 
turn your work and into the back loops again you're gonna work two half double crochet into that first space and then one half double crochet across so you get to the last space and in that last space you're gonna add two half double crochet into into the entire space which means into both the front and back okay so I'm gonna continue to work my half double crochets until I get to that last space and I'll show you how I work my two half double crochet into both spaces All right, so here I am at the last space of the row, and I'm going to do two half double crochet into both spaces, just like so. That's one and two. So now we should have a total of 34 um, stitches up here at the top. So our stitch count is 34 now. So for the next five rows, we're going to do just regular half double crochet into the back loop and then the next row will be a an increase row and we're going to continue to do that until a stitch count here at the top is 44 stitches so i'll meet you back when i have um my total count of 44 stitches here at the top and i'll tell you how many rows i worked in all for the arm all right so we completed our, our arm piece and we have a total of 41 rows from the first half double crochet row to the top here and our stitch count is 44 stitches and this is what it looks like you fold it up this is your arm piece and we're going to put this to the side and we're going to start working on our panel it looks like this and basically we're going to do the same exact thing at the bottom which is the rib part ribbon part it's just going to be um more rows than the arm piece okay so the arm piece is much smaller so we're going to um start with that part and then work our way up with just a simple half double crochet in the back loops only no increases no anything just back and forth half double crochet in the back loops so let's get started so to get started we're gonna grab our 4.5 millimeter hook which is the G hook and a ball of yarn and we're gonna start with a slip knot like we did with the yarn piece and we're gonna chain up seven one two three four five six and seven and we're gonna go to the back bumps into the second bump of the work and we're gonna do a single crochet and then single crochet all the way across for a total of six single crochets five and the last one is six and now we're gonna chain up one turn our work and then work in those back in the back spaces so instead of going through both we're gonna go into the back loop of the work and work our single crochets and we do this until we have a total of 58 rows. I find it a little difficult to hold my work with my nails, so excuse me. But I'm just gonna do the same thing we did with the arm piece. So continue to do this until you have a total of 58 rows and then we'll move on to the next part of the work. And remember to go into both spaces or both loops 
of the work on the last stitch then chain up one and turn your work and do the same exact thing again and I'll meet you when I have my 58 rows all right so I completed my 58 rows of single crochets in the back loops only and now we're gonna move on to the rest which we will work up this way we was working up this way now we're gonna turn our work this way and work up so I'm gonna continue with my 4.5 millimeter for this row only and then I'll switch over to my eye hook to finish the work to finish the rest of the work and now we're gonna put a half double crochet into every single space so we should have a total of 58 half, um, half double crochets on this first row so the first one will go right in here The next one will go right in here. And then that's three and four. And continue until you have 58 across. So I reached my last space and I'm going to put my last half of a crochet of this first row in there. And then I'm going to switch hooks. And I'm going to grab my eye hook, which is a 5.5. I am going to chain one. And remember, before you move on, make sure that you count your stitches to make sure that you have 58 in total. Or whichever amount it is that you have. Because if you're making this bigger, of course, it's going to be more than 58. And then we're going to work into the back loops of our work with a half double crochet in every space and we're going to continue to do this for a total of 30 rows so from rows 2 which we are on now to row 30 we're going to chain one and half double crochet in every space of the back loop only except for the of course the last space of your work the last stitch which is way back here and it's very hidden so make sure that you go into both loops of this last stitch to complete your rows and I will meet you guys back when I have a total of 30 rows of half double crochets in the back loops only all right so we worked up 30 rows and now we're gonna move on to the next step which will be the top here which is the top of the shoulders which I'll show you on the other piece I have here so we're gonna just do these parts here and I'll show you how to do that now all right so to begin we're not gonna cut our yarn off we're just gonna continue from here and the way I know um, how many I want to do is by dividing my stitch count by four and that's a total of 14 so I want to do 14 half double crochets in the back loops only for two rows and I'm going to do the same exact thing on this side 14 from this corner to here 14 and from this corner to here 14 so let me just show you real quick we're going to chain up one turn our work and then half double crochet in to the back loops only for 14 stitches so that's two three four five thirteen fourteen and then we're going to chain up one and we're going to turn our work and then we're going to do half the crochets again one two three 13 and the last one we're gonna do it on both so 14 and then we cut our work off here so we're gonna chain up one and cut our yarn leave it a little bit 
and then we're gonna do the same exact thing on the other side. So we're gonna turn our work around like this and we're gonna count 14 from this side to this side and we know where to put our work. So I'm just gonna get my work, my yarn I should say. Attach it to my hook here and I'm gonna count 14. I remember to count that last space is always hit, hidden. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And this is my 14 space and I'm gonna attach it to both at this point. Well actually I want to put my hook first and then attach my yarn. Like so. And I'm gonna pull it through. I'm gonna slip stitch in there. I'm gonna chain one and then I'm gonna do my half double crochet there. And then in the back loops only I'm gonna continue. That's two, three, four, thirteen, and fourteen. So we're gonna go into both spaces on that last stitch. Chain one, turn our work, and repeat half double crochet fourteen. And then we have our shoulders ready. And here's my other part. And we're just gonna sew those together. So you can see here, they match up. And that's gonna be the next step, is sewing our pieces together to form a sweater. So here I have both of my panels and this is the front of my work and what I want to do is I want to switch it around like this and I want to sew the shoulder parts first but I want to sew the wrong sides together so that way then we can turn it inside right if I may <laughs> if you understand what I'm saying but I'm gonna sew here and I'm gonna sew here and then we'll add the arms and then we'll close up the sweater so let me just show you so these are my fronts like I said, I want to fold, um, sew them up like this. I'm just going to switch it around like this. So th this is my back of the work. And I'm just going to grab them like this. I'm going to join them here. And I'm going to join them here. Now the way you join is up to you. I'm just going to slip stitch together or whip stitch, I should say. You can do um, mattress stitch. You can do single crochets if you prefer. It's up to you. But I'm just going to, like I said, Whip stitch it together and I'll show you how I do that so here I have my yarn and I have a long piece of thread or I should say yarn I have my needle and yarn <laughs> ready I can't speak this morning so forgive me I'm trying to finish this up because I have another pattern in the works and I want to finish it up so I can bring it to you guys so I'm gonna attach it to both of the last spaces here like so and I'm gonna bring it through and I'm going through both um, loops and I'm just gonna tie a knot at the end here so it doesn't come apart just like so and I'm gonna go right back inside that same space and just start sewing my parts together my, my two panels together and then I'm gonna go into the next ones just like so. And then again. And just continue to do that until you have them both sewn in. And then we'll do the other side. And then I'll show you how to add the arms.
at this point, I'm gonna cut my yarn. And another thing, another tip I'm gonna give you before I hide my ends here in the work, I wait until I'm completely done and my daughter can try it on, make sure that it, everything is correct before I go ahead and, and finish it off because I wanna make sure that it fits so well, okay? So I'm not gonna do anything with the ends right now. I'm just gonna leave them as they are. Now I'm gonna do the other side and do the same exact thing. It's just bring them together, add my needle and thread through it, and tie a knot at the end. And again, bring it through that same space and start sewing it together. Going through the next, just like so. And then just cut my work. And now, uh, shoulders are sewn together this is still the wrong side I still want my wrong side so here's what it looks like so far this is your neck opening and this is where we're gonna add the arms so we want to make sure that we have the wrong sides facing up and I know what my wrong side is by looking at the bottom here and if my string is on this side then this is the right side so I'm just gonna flip it over and I'm gonna start to sew it here on this side and do the same exact thing you did for for your shoulder part you just got to find the middle by folding it in half like that and then so we add our stitch marker right there and then we take our work and we fold it in half and then we just line it up with our work open it up and then attach the stitch marker right there okay and if you want to add stitch markers over here then you do that but what I suggest you do if you want you can also count the stitches find your middle and do it that way and then here I want to make sure that I attach it to the right place so I'll count my my ridges here see this little bumps one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and on this tenth one is where I want to attach it. So I'll do the same on this side. And I'll count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And on here is where I want to attach it. That way it could be even. And then we're just gonna fold it over like this and attach our yarn and start sewing. Simple as that. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to attach my yarn here, and then here on this 10th one, make a knot, and then just sew it together. And when I have both arms sewn in, I'll come back to you and tell you what the next step is So we have our 
sleeves sewn into the panels of the sweater. So now that we have that done, I'm gonna fold it over like so, making sure that it's still on the wrong side. And now what we're gonna do is that we're gonna sew from this part here all the way up, up like this, and then we're gonna sew the sleeves together, going this way like this, all the way down, and then we're gonna do the same exact thing on the other side. So from here up, and then the sleeves this way. And then we'll do the next part, which is shaping the neck area. So I'm just gonna get my needle and thread, well, my needle and yarn here, which I already have attached to the needle. And I'm gonna start on this side of the sweater like here at the bottom and I'm just gonna attach my needle here right at the end of it and I am going to again create a knot right there at the bottom and then we can start sewing it move everything out of the way so you can see what I'm doing here so I'm gonna put my my needle right in the same spot where I did the knot I'm gonna start from there and I'm gonna be sewing these two panels together to close it up pretty simple to do get these yarns out of the way because like I said I want to keep them um, loose just in case I need to take it apart and redo something then I can do that without having to worry about a tangled mess so I want her to try it on before I continue on so she's gonna try it on before I get to the neck part but yeah so we just continue to sew this up like we have been and then I'll meet you back when it's time to shape the neck and another thing is I should have said make sure that these little parts are lined up together so it looks like it's evened out so just look at the one side of it and then the other side make sure that they are aligned you see the little um, ripples here which is from the half when we have double crochet in the back loop so we get this bump here so these stitches are worked on so you gotta make sure that those are aligned so it doesn't look funny the sweater I mean does it look funny so as you can see if I open it up you have to make sure that these are aligned I hope that makes sense this one with this one, this one with this one, and so on. So, I'm just gonna grab my work. This one is correct, yeah. This one is fine. And just keep holding on to it so it can stay together. Alright, so my daughter tried it on. It fits her great. Um, so we're going to work on the neck area. So I have determined that this is going to be my front where these little stragglies are. So I'm going to turn it around and start from... Well, actually, before I do that, I want to turn it inside out because I want to work on the right side of the work. So just turn it inside out. So we can work on the right side. Here we go. And then I'll just go back and hide all those stragglers. So we said that this is my front here. So I'm gonna turn it to the back side and I'm gonna start from the back, right back here. Okay. Now we have to determine what do we wanna do with our neck area. 
and you have lots of choices you can do just single crochets around and then single crochet again a couple of times or three times or we can do what we did to the sleeves and the bottom of the sweater which was the single crochets in the back loops to get this look here we did that to the sleeves and we did that to the bottom of our sweater we can do that at the top and I'll show you how to do that or you can just do double crochets and then do a row double crochets and then do double crochets in the front loops only and you can do two rows of those to um, get a nice effect but let me just show you here I have my hook and yarn in hand and just look for the middle of your sweater and all right so we'll find our middle and just count up to the middle and just insert your hook there attach your work like so and then you want to chain one and then determine how long do you want your collar to be I think uh, um, uh, four will be good for me so that's two three and four and then one more to turn our work all right I hope you can see that right and then what we want to do is single crochet into the back bump of the second space so we skip the first and we go straight into the second that's one two three and four okay and then what you want to do after you do that it's going to slip stitch into the next two spaces of your sweater so slip stitch one slip stitch two and then you're going to turn your work so slightly like this and you're going to work in those single crochet so you're going to skip those two slip stitches and you're going to work into the single crochets so the first single crochet will be you're going to skip one two and this is your first single crochet so you single crochet in there let me move this out of the way it's three so single crochet in that first one that's one two three and the last one I was going to both so that's four you chain one and again you have to turn your work around and it's gonna be challenging because you have to turn around the whole thing and then you're gonna work in the back bumps again four single crochets one two three and four right and after we do that we're gonna go back into the sweater and we're gonna slip stitch into the next two spaces so slip stitch one slip stitch slip stitch two and again we have to turn our work just turn it a little and we're gonna skip those two slip stitches and just do four single crochets in the back loops so skip one skip two and then just go into that third that's one two three and then into both four okay chain one and then we turn our work slightly like so make sure I'm still in frame and then we do single crochets and back loops and you're gonna continue this until you get all the way around and when we get there I'll show you the next step so remember you just do sing four single crochets and then you go back into the body of the, the sweater of the I mean the neck of the sweater and then you slip stitch the next two spaces whoops I lost my work 
you slip stitch two and I'm using my eye hook for this you can use a smaller hook which I should have done but I already started with the eye hook so I'm just gonna continue and then you just turn your work and continue on and I'll meet you back when I have worked the whole entire neck and we'll get to the next step All right, so I reached the other side of my work. I went all the way around, and now I'm just gonna work the last few stitches. So I'm gonna slip stitch in the next two. One and two. Turn my work. Skip those two slip stitches, and single crochet in four. So here's one. Two, three, oops, three, and my last one, four here. As soon as I turn on the camera, I get shy. <laughs> Chain one, and oops, turn my work. Single crochet back loops only for the next four. And that was four. And then I'm left with two to slip stitch into. So I'm gonna slip stitch one and two. Turn my work. And I'm gonna single crochet, skip the two slip stitches and single crochet up these four spaces here. Chain one. And again, we turn our work. Single crochet. I think my husband left the TV on in the back room. Hope it's not, you can hear, you can't hear it. Gotta turn that off. All right, so there. Now, what's left to do is to, let's see how we could close this up. So we have to close this up, and since we made it here, we got a slip stitch into this space here where we started at. So we got a slip stitch in there. Oops. We'll do that again. All right. Why can't I get my work here? All right, so slip stitch. And then we should turn our work, maybe. <laughs> and then close it up. Well, I think we should close it up like this. So this is the front of our work. We're just gonna bend it over like this and just slip stitch in the back of both. Well, not slip stitch, but single crochet in the back of both. Let's see if that works. That's one. I can find it. That's two. There you go. Three. And the last one. Go through both. Four. I'm going to chain two so my work doesn't come on them. And just to show you what it looks like just like so and then our sweater is complete all we have to do is sew in 
our ends and I'll show you how I do that right now. Let me just get my needle. And grab my needle and I'm gonna here we go. I'm gonna grab my work and I'm just gonna go through the stitches wherever I can to hide my work. My little stragglers here. Just go like this. Since they short, I'm gonna pull on it a little bit and I'm gonna go the opposite way. Like so. So it doesn't come undone. Mm -hmm. Pull it through. And then you can just cut. One is done. Now we're gonna do the other one. So we're gonna go through our stitches. I'm gonna go down this way. Like so. Pull it. That's short enough. I still have a little bit short here, so I'm gonna cut that off. Like so. And that's how you hide your little straggler. So make sure you turn it back inside out so you can hide all those stragglers and your sweater is done. Let me cut my yarn here. So pull on that and my sweater's done. Let me back up. Just to show you. So here she is. A little tiny sweater. <laughs> for my tiny daughter. Here's the sleeves. It was the sewing part. See how nice that turned out. Perfect. Here's the other sleeve nice and perfect let's turn it around this is the back of our work be really pretty and here's the sides of it the seams and the other seam and that's it yeah. for this tutorial I hope you guys enjoyed it and um, stay tuned I'm working on another sweater it's gonna be um, an oversized sweater for her so it's gonna be in a size small but it's gonna be um, an oversized style this one is more of a crop style and I hope you enjoyed it and yeah don't don't forget to hit that like button if you did like it and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and if you do make one I would love to see your your work you can share it with me on my Facebook it's posted down below or you can share it you can tag me on instagram and yeah thank you guys so much for watching and i will catch you in the next video